Hi, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to replace a backdrop in Photoshop. All right, so let's go File, Open, and I'm going to go to Raw Model Photos, pick Kayla Model 1. And I'm going to select my white balance tool. Just pick this background here. Looks pretty good. I think I already made some adjustments to this. So let's go ahead and open image. And first thing I'm going to do is make a copy of the background. We'll call this model. And I'm going to go in the quick selection tool and click on select subject. And then go on select and mask. Let's zoom in here. And I'm actually going to change the color here because there's pink in her dress. I don't want that to be the color. So let's pick something that's very different. Kind of an orange color. There's no other orange in there. All right. So now I want to go on the add selection. Just paint in this area here that was missed. Quite good. And then I want to go on the refine edge, just paint in where her hair is here. And then I want to turn on smart radius, put that on about four pixels. It's going to help clean up my whole edge. And that looks quite good. Let's hit OK. And then I want to hit Q. And I'll do the same thing here. Um, on when you're in a quick mask, go to channels and you'll see the quick channel mask. Double click on that and that's where you can adjust opacity of your mask and the color of your mask. Let's make it orange. And let's go in B for brush. Let's make that smaller. I'm holding down control and option to interactively adjust the brush size there. I can also adjust the hardness. And let's go in the lasso tool. Hold down <coughs> command delete. And let's just check the rest of the edge there a little bit here. By hitting X, I can switch these two colors back and forth. All right, that looks quite good. Let's hit X again, go back to our layers and put a mask on there. And then I'm going to make another copy of the background and call this behind model. And then I'm going to do file place. And what this is going to do is it's going to take the image that I place and make it a smart object. So I'm going to pick urban background 18 and let's make that bigger so we don't see the ground. And that looks pretty cool. I want to see the face and I want to see the star there. Good. Now this looks too bright. It's overpowering. So let's put this on multiply. Now it's too dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this layer here. If I turn these two off, you'll see. I'm going to do command M for curves. And what I want to do is I'm going to make this brightest part of the background white. Like that. Now if we turn these two back back on. You can see that looks a lot more integrated because the light parts of the background image are also the parts that were being hit by the light. All right. Next thing I want to do is add a little bit of a shadow there. So what I'm going to do is hold down command, click
click on our mask, make a new layer called shadow and fill my selection with black. So I hit D for default to make my foreground color black. I'm going to hold down option and delete to fill my selection with black and V for the move tool. Let's move that. So if the light's coming in here, the shadow would be around there. And let's go to filter blur gallery tilt shift. Let's turn that around 90 degrees. So what I want is I want the beginning of the shadow to be less blurry than the back. So this represents the most blurry and this line represents no blur at all. So I do want it to have a little bit, bit of blur at the beginning. So something like that, maybe let's hit OK. And there you go. Let's put that on multiply. And let's take the opacity down. About there looks pretty good. All right, and then what I also want to do to make this feel more integrated is I'm going to put a gradient map on top of it and color grade the whole image. So I'm going to go here and I already have them here, but just in case, um, let's go ahead and reset the gradients. To load gradients, simply click on this little gear, go down to load gradients and then select your gradient preset file. That will add the gradients there. So let's pick this one and put that on soft light. Now that's very harsh. Um, we may want to use something more subtle like this. You can flip through them here. Now that you have it on soft light, it'll show you interactively. Uh, this one I actually like. Yeah, let's, let's do that one there. We can call this color grade. Okay, and then I want to add just some fog, uh, like some steam in here, like so if she was in a back alley. And I'm going to use a cloud. So let's go ahead, place in bed. Let's go to our clouds. We're going to pick number 16 here. I'm going to make this quite a bit bigger. We're going to use this to simulate some steam kind of coming in like that. And let's go to image adjustments, black and white. And I'm going to take the blue down until I get this color being black, the blue and the cyan there. I don't want to overdo it because then we're going to start clipping that. and We don't want that. So about there looks good. And let's actually rasterize this. We don't need that. And I'm going to add a gradient on top of it. Sorry, a curve on top of it. Group those. And just push that black point all the way to black. But I don't want it affecting this. Which is why I made it an adjustment layer. Because I can now go on my brush tool. Make that brush bigger and softer. Just paint right around there. Good. And let's collapse those. So I select them both and Command E. And let's put this on screen. There you go. So we now have some steam coming in there. Move it around just a bit. And you can see we're still seeing some of it there. So I may need to put a mask on that and just paint it out there where I don't want it. There you go. And I want that below my color grade. And then finally, let's add some nicer reflection into our glasses here. To do that, I'm going to go in my pen tool. And then just clicking and dragging, making a curve around the inside of the glass here.
and I can go A for the what for the um, path selection tool and just make some minor adjustments there select both of these right mouse click make selection and let's make a new layer we'll call this glass reflection and let's fill that with black and put it on screen yeah, while we're here let's get rid of this so i'm going to go on the healing brush select this area here and just paint that out Good. okay so now i want to take my urban background command j to make a copy of it and put it on normal for now and group it to my sunglasses reflection and then i can move it around until i get you know something that i think looks cool yeah maybe right around there it looks pretty nice and i also want to blur the background a bit so let's turn that off for a second and because this is a smart object it'll add the blur non-destructively um how much you blur it really depends on what kind of depth of field you have and also how far you, how far away you want the background to appear so with no blur she's right up against it if i add some blur we're pushing that background behind her a bit more um, if we go all the way it's we're now it's kind of far away so i think right around seven is nice and I also want that on this. So what I'm going to do is hold down Option and Command and just drag that to this one. That's going to make a copy of the Smart Filters and Gaussian Blur onto there. So there you go. That's how you can quickly change a backdrop. One thing I might want to do is just add a little bit of vignetting here. I want to do that under my Steam layer there. So let's go ahead and make a new layer and we'll call this dark vignette. And let's go on the gradient tool and just get some black coming in there. We can adjust the opacity of that to our liking. And let's do a light vignette. And let's switch our gradient to white and just have some light coming in there. Just the opacity a bit on that. Generally, when I'm compositing images, what you want to do is you want to add things on top that'll make it feel like your two things that you're compositing together belong more together. So by having steam that goes across her and the background, it feels more like these two exist in the same space. So that looks quite nice. Let me take the opacity down just a bit on that steam. And now the beauty of the smart object is I can go right mouse click here and relink to file and I can pick a different background. So with one click and yeah, it's a little different proportion there. So I'll just have to drag it up, but I've, selected both so you can see in her glasses it's also changing kind of cool and there you go um well i like the other one better so let's go back to before that and there you have it and now because i have my original here i can option eyeball click and you can see the before and after and you can see how easy it is if you have a studio uh, portrait, how to put a different background into it. All right, so there you have it. That's how you replace a backdrop in Photoshop. Now, all the assets that I used in this tutorial, including the camera raw model photo, the backdrops, and the clouds, and the gradient map precepts, are all available as part of my Photoshop starter kit. So in the description of this video, I've included a link to the Photoshop starter kit, which you can download for free. You just need to set up an account on Nucle. And uh, yeah, 
all those assets plus a whole lot more will be yours for free. And if you like this tutorial, please do that. And I'll see you next time.